I purchased a cheap video capture card for less than $10. There's a lot of really cheap video capture devices on the market right now. I wanted to see how that product would compare to some of my other capture devices. The experience was night and day, and that is what this video is going to focus on. Here's where we see the difference. You can't read the text on the cheap capture card at all. Also, if we look at the landing leg on this particular product, see how the cheap capture card, it's much more pixelated. I wanna say in order to upload this to YouTube, I had to use a progressive sequence or timeline, and that's why the ADVC 110 and the Intensity Shuttle also have a little bit of pixelation to them. If I output this to my broadcast compliance CRT monitor, there is no pixelation. The interlaced video of the ADVC 110 and the Intensity Shuttle would look just fine if I burned back to a DVD. The cheap video capture card is going to look horrible. The Intensity Shuttle will allow you to make the video darker or lighter by sliding the video slider. The chroma slider will allow you to make the video black and white or add more saturation. The ADVC 110 won't let you adjust the video levels as you're recording. You could get third party hardware to make adjustments, but in general, the ADVC 110 and other Firewire based DV converters are just gonna bring the video in at what they call Mini DV25 Kodak or Mini DV25 compliant which is a pretty decent Kodak. It's gonna use a little bit more hard disk space than MPEG-2 and MPEG-4. As you can tell, the cheap video capture card gives you a lot of parameters that you can change during capture. Even though it's got all those different parameters, they're kind of useless because the video itself is just kind of funky looking. It's kind of chalky looking and really like dark with, without a lot of gradient in between. The gain is set at 16 by default. I lowered it to zero, but the audio was still blown out. I'll be the first to admit, some of the cheap video capture cards might get a little bit better image quality than what my cheap capture card is getting, but I don't think they'd be on par with the Canopus ADV C110 or the Intensity Shuttle. I'm not gonna suggest everybody go out and buy the Intensity Shuttle, because the Intensity Shuttle has a hard time capturing VHS tapes that were recorded with camcorders from Best Buy and Circuit City. The reason I was able to capture the video you've seen in this video by using the Intensity Shuttle is because I set up a timeline in Premiere Pro and I output it with the Intensity Shuttle to my VCR. Once it was in the VCR, I could capture it with the Intensity Shuttle using Premiere Pro because the Intensity Shuttle is broadcast compliant. It had a decent signal. Having said that, I can use Premiere Pro along with ADVC110 and output to my VCR on VHS tape and capture that using Premiere Pro and the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. The reason being is the ADVC110 is broadcast compliant as well. It's leaving a nice clean signal. I want to say the Intensity Shuttle can capture from high 8 videotapes from DVDs and from Blu-rays pretty easy. It's really just VHS that it has a problem capturing from. And it's because VHS is just really low quality video to begin with. You can capture old VHS tapes with the Intensity Shuttle if you invest in a TBC, which is a time-based corrector. But why buy one used for $150 or $250 or buy a brand new one for like $350? When you can avoid using a time-based corrector if you get the generic Firewire DV converters, pretty much all of them work pretty good with old worn-out VHS tapes. I want to say the black video device you see with ADS on it is the ADS AV PyroLink. It's another Firewire-based DV converter. It's pretty much on par with the ADVC 110. Unlike the cheap video capture card that had you install drivers and software, the DV converters don't need drivers. Programs like Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas, iMovie, they'll recognize the DV converter as a mini DV camera. I want to say that it's possible if you spent $50 on a USB capture card to capture VHS tapes, it may work. It might have quality as good as my Canopus ADVC 110, but I think it's hit or miss. One out of every four might have good quality. 
The other three are probably gonna look horrible. I wanna say that you can't run out and buy a generic DV converter anymore. Probably about four years ago, all the companies kind of stopped making them. If you wanna purchase one on eBay or on Craigslist, make sure they have the power adapter for them. I wanna say the Canopus ADVC110 gets its power from the FireWire cable. As long as you have a six pin FireWire cable, you don't need their AC adapter. They do offer an AC adapter if you're using a four pin FireWire cable. I should also add that the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle gets its power from the USB 3 cable. I think both devices are kind of cool in the fact that you don't have to worry about a third party power adapter getting lost or stolen. I know some of you are probably thinking, why would I want to spend $80 on a used Canopus ADVC 110 when I can spend $110 and start getting one of the video capture cards that does high definition as well as standard definition? I want to say that some of those cards for $110, $120 are hit or miss as well when it comes to capturing VHS. I'm just saying if you want to capture VHS tapes, the DV converters would probably be your safest bet. You might pay a little bit more getting a generic DV converter, depending on what model you get, but you will get more functionality out of it as well. Those DV converters, most of them can input and output video. So while you're capturing your video, you can see it on one of the old CRT monitors instead of having to squint at the little video capture you know, utility. Some of you may not need that functionality, but it's worth it. If, if you're going to capture at least, you know, like five or six tapes, it might be worth it for you to be able to see it on, on the bigger monitor and say, yeah, we don't need this part of the video or we don't need this part of the video. Um, you'll get a nice clean image if you're playing VHS tapes back onto the old CRT monitor. It'll look better than it will on your computer monitor.